What's going on, everybody? So, and welcome you now to the next day of the Push 90 90 Day Sprint Challenge. And what we're going to be talking about today are the five different types of objections and basically how to be able to go over overcome them. So, the first objection that you guys are always going to come across is going to be the money objection. Now, people never have a money issue, it's always a value issue. You know, naturally, people will say they don't have the money, but if people, let's say electricity went out tomorrow, they'd go out there and find the money. If people saw, let's say a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or their dream car for $325 or $500 for sale outside, and it was a $100,000 to $200,000 car, check this out. They would go out there and find the money. They'd borrow the money. They'd do whatever they would be able to do to go out there and get the car. So people value a car, value possessions more than they sometimes do their own income or their own dreams. So I always recommend guys, when you're coming across the money objection, help people find the money. You know, what I used to do back in 2016, um, and even now is I try to come up with a solution. So if somebody tells me they have a money issue, well, let's sell some things. Okay, when will you have the money? Okay, let's go out there and sell your Xbox. Let me help you come up with the money so that way we can come up with a solution to get you started. Now, the second type of objection that you're gonna come across is the time objection. I always say it's not that people don't have the time, but people just won't make the time. It's never a time issue, it's always a priority issue. Okay, so check this out. Time objection goes back into the simple concept that people need to prioritize this thing. You know, a lot of times, guys, the average person, I want you guys to understand this, the average person has about 168 hours every single week. And those 168 hours work in a, a 40 hour a week job, going to the gym for about an hour and a half and um, going out there and eating, you know, and sleeping eight hours every single day would add up to about an extra 60 hours a week. What are the average people doing in those 60 hours? Most people aren't taking advantage of those 60 hours. So what I would do is I wouldn't argue with people when they say they don't have the time, because then what you're doing is you're kind of coming across as somebody that is their enemy or their opposite, trying to judge them. What I would do is if somebody tells me, hey, I don't have the time, be like, listen, man, I understand. I used to believe that I didn't have the time either. You know, I, but then I figured out, I, I know how you feel, bro. But then I found out that I actually do have the time, man. In the early morning, you know, instead of me going out there and sleeping in an extra, you know, 10 hours a day or 11 hours, I would only sleep eight hours. And guess what? In the early morning, I would wake up and go trade New York session. And you could also say the same thing for the opposite. Let's say if that person has free time at night, I realized, bro, at night I had an extra hour or two that I was doing nothing. And I decided to hop on a London session and I did have the time. So the first objection you're going to come across is money. The second one you're going to come across is time. The third objection you're going to come across is the objection that it's too good to be true. Naturally, people that believe things are too good to be true will never find an opportunity that are good, that will be good for you. Okay, so what I like to tell people that are too good to be true is I like to really educate them. I like to help them understand that this entire business is going to take time, just like any business, guys. You have to dedicate two hours a day every single day or you're not going to see any type of level of high success. So let people know that it's not too good to be true because then they'll never find an opportunity that's actually good for you, right? And the next objection that you're going to actually going to come across is the objection that, hey, listen, you know, John, it might work for you. It might work for uh, George, but it might not work for me the don't believe in themselves objection. So people that don't believe in themselves, guys, I need you to understand that a lot of times what you wanna do is you wanna be able to go out there and relate to this person or get them connected to somebody that can also relate to them. So what I like to do is I like to get people connected to other people that didn't believe in themselves or had trouble believing in themselves that you know trading was very difficult, it was too hard, network marketing was hard. And I like to relate back to that person's story and say, hey, listen, man, in the beginning, I thought I couldn't do it either. You know, in the beginning, I thought that trading was super hard, that it involved a lot of math. You know, in the beginning, I wasn't an extrovert. But then I decided to really go out there and challenge myself. And guess what? My entire life changed. My entire business changed when I decided to go out there and challenge myself. So the first objection, guys, we talked about is money. Second objection we talked about is time. Third objection is too good to be true. Fourth objection, people don't believe in themselves. And the last objection we're going to talk about today um, is that it isn't real or people call it a scam or, you know, something along the lines like that. And when people don't think it's real, I like to let people understand that 
obviously it is real. And we'd like to, like I say, lead them to the education, not educate them on your own, but always lead them to the education. So the way that I do this is very simple. I like to help them understand that trading is a trillion dollar a day industry. Trading market has $7 trillion in a day circulating in the foreign exchange market, just in general, right? So if you look at that concept and then you look at the cryptocurrency concept, you'll see so many different, um, you know, stats, credibility, you'll understand that trading and investing has made more millionaires than any other industry in the world. So what I like to do is I like to lead them to the education. I'll give them a podcast to listen to. Um, I'll have them watch the 10 different ways to make money in cryptocurrency uh, to get a little bit more insight and information. Uh, I'll have them go out there and listen to an audiobook real quick, and I'll lead them to the education and then follow up with them a little bit later. So these are the five objections. This, these are the different ways that you're going to be able to go out there and close people individually in the business. My biggest recommendation is to go out there and apply these today, because I guarantee you, you're going to see instant results once you do that. So appreciate y'all for hopping on, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.